Hello again, golf fanatics. Welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Round one of the FedEx playoffs is in the books. The St. Jude Championship goes to Hideki Matsuyama in a wild finish where he just utterly was blowing this huge lead, double bogeys and bogeys, and he just really got uh, uh, in a bad way. But then, just like champions do, Hideki's no stranger to champions. Uh, he, he gets his uh, shit together, regroups, birdies the final two holes and wins by two strokes. So, you know, it's all good. He actually lost the lead to Victor Hovland for a brief moment when Hovland got the 16 under. Hideki doubled uh, making uh, the – I forget which hole it was. But anyway, uh, that's done as done can be. Down to 50 players now, and we're headed out to Colorado uh, for the BMW Championship, a new course uh, with millions of dollars on the line. Very few, if any, I think, have played this course, especially in uh, in any kind of competitive uh, PGA type event. Uh, Castle Pines did at one time host a PGA Tour event called the International. You'll probably hear that all week. Modified stable for scoring, which, and from what we know of the Barracuda, that means it's a highly scorable birdie type fest. But the, when I go and look at the golf course itself, it's really hard to tell uh, because it, it has been renovated lengthened massively by uh jack nicholas so i think the course is different than when it was way back in 2006 much longer as you'll see but still doesn't play that way and we'll get into that shortly uh so we are going to go hole by hole with the with the flyover beautiful flyover and uh as a special perk to the video i'm going to go ad free this time and uh so i hope you enjoy that well, anyway, as long as Golf Digest doesn't add ads, I'm not going to do it. So subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and let's get started. Castle Pines Golf Club, uh, prepare yourself for the Mile High Club. <laughs> it's uh, so 8,130 yards, par 72 golf course. It has four, over 400 feet of elevation change up and down. So walking this golf course is not going to be an easy task. And uh, it also sitting 6,400 feet above sea level. I don't know if like people, you know, Denver Broncos and people that practice and live in that environment are used to it. And they used to do like the whole, you go up there to train and then you go down to wherever sea level is and you're a much better athlete. You got more oxygen in your lungs and things of that nature. So I don't know. Uh, these guys will probably get used to that elevation in the first couple of days but we'll have to see. I mean, coming off that brutal, brutal week of uh, heat and humidity in Memphis, it's it's really going to be a grind for these guys. But as you can see, awesome scenery, uh, beautiful landscape, not only the landscape, but the wildlife. You got bears and bobcats. There's a herd of 250 elk that just live in the area on the golf course uh, rolling around there. So you got hole number one, it's a nifty looking 657 yard downhill par five, full send. Uh, you just looks like you could bombs away down there and probably hit one 400 yards. Hole number four is a 254 yard par three over this gigantic gorge. And you can't, I mean, from the video, you can barely even see the green from where you're standing. It looks like it's a mile away. Uh, hole number 11 is another visually intimidating par three that's downhill to an island like green. It's got Creek surrounding it, bunkers guarding it to the right. Uh, so uh, really the course of action seems to be management. Uh, Castle Pines uh, demands uh, strategic thinking uh, due to its layout, elevation changes, risk reward. There's a lot of risk reward holes. I still think even with the length, the way these guys are going to be hitting bombs, they're going to have an opportunity on a, on one of these short par fours to drive it. Uh, I think the way they'll set things up. Uh, I think players that would be well versed on Pete Dye courses, just from a, a strategic standpoint, would excel. Uh, so let's jump over to Fantasy National. Take a look at the stats. Stand to the good side. Epic ride three wide. Hello, Billy Ho here. As the sole creator for this channel, I need you, the viewer, to help me grow. Just by subscribing to the channel and clicking that like button alone, you can help spread Billy Ho Sports 
to the racing community on YouTube. But there are other ways you can help. You can instantly share my content on social media directly to your chosen platform. Finally, there are ways you can contribute to the show's growth financially. I use cash apps such as Venmo and PayPal. You can check the description of my videos for the details there. Also, did you know there was a super thanks option on YouTube? Yeah, just click those three little dots at the bottom right hand of my videos, select thanks, use the sliding scale to choose a monetary value that you would like to contribute, and boom, there you go. Remember, your continued support means so much to me, so thank you for sharing in this journey, and have a great day. Okay, just a, a real quick note on the weather. It, it looks like that the area, uh, Colorado Spring or wherever it's Castle Pines is located, uh, it's kind of like a uh, has a propensity for afternoon thunder showers. It had PM storms, PM storms, PM storms for like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I imagine we'll probably get a over, little overnight rain. It's probably going to soften the golf course a little bit. Uh, the elevation, I, I remember Club de, de Chapultepec or whatever it was called, where they played the Mexico Championship, huge elevation there. Where they play in Vegas, obviously big elevation there. I believe that's Silverado. Uh, courses like that, uh, if you wanted to do any kind of comp. I thought maybe a little bit of Valhalla in there, Hala Hala, just because of the elevation and kind of like the downhill and it's not, you know, is the the way it's kind of goes over creeks and over water, but there's the hazards aren't don't look like they'd be too awful bad. Uh, there are ten holes with water in play, but uh, I I don't know if it's going to be that big of a deal. But by the way, Billy Ho contest is out. I just released it, so we're going to do do some lineup builds here in just a moment. But make sure you're in the contest. And uh, so we can try to get as many people in as possible. So let's check out Fantasy National. So the first thing I did, I jumped over here and I just went and found a model. I, I like to go through and find old different models from different tournaments just to just to get my baseline. And so I thought of RBC Heritage, the strategic play, the, the importance of proximity, irons, things of that nature, Pete Dye course. So I put that on here and, it, and it, it's one of my more robust models where it has a lot of different things like proximity uh, buckets from 150. Cause I think that it's going to be club downtime. The fair, the fairways are decently generous enough. So it's really tough to tell. I think four inch rough is what they're calling for, but I don't know if that's going to be that big of a deal, but I wanted opportunities. Definitely tee to green, little putting, obviously the scoring, uh, little around the green greens gain so good drives i went with i don't know if i'll do driving distance i feel like everybody's driving distance is going to be elevated so i don't know how much of an advantage the huge bombers are going to have uh so it is kind of tough to gauge skills on a course that we we don't see very often but i think this week i've been avoiding it the whole time and it's really just killing me last week I tried to get cute and play Rory because he's had a better course history and he's been all right, but you saw what a disaster Rory was. He, he just didn't, he, maybe the heat got to him because he progressively got worse every day. And uh, so I don't know if he can regroup and be better this time around, but I, I'm just, I'm all in on Scotty. Every lineup's going to have Scotty and then I'll figure it out from there or Xander. Uh, I haven't really hundred percent decided, but you do get a full uh, 1200 dollar discount uh so it's really tough to say xander is more of a it's this is not west coast it's kind of it's it, it is sort of out west so i don't know if you want to do that as a uh a thing you know where you know xander is a west coast guy but uh the bent grass scheffler's putters coming around a little bit so as long as he's even or just a little bit positive on the putting uh trail I think he'll be good. I like these POA slash bent grass greens for him. I think he'll be fine with those. So I don't think I'll go back right back to Matsuyama. 
uh, with the it, coming off the win. That's going to be a tough call. But guys like Morikawa, Hovland had a resurgent. These I'm just starring guys I like. People seem to like Patrick Cantlay because he's just really had a good history at the BMW Championship. But he's been low key playing pretty well. He's got he's popping in a lot of these stats. I went last twelve rounds because I wanted the most recent. Uh, Tony Finau definitely coming around. So all these guys are second men in underneath Scotty and then trying to figure it out from there. Billy Ho is still as another candidate that's just been playing really, really good golf. Wyndham Clark is going to be on everybody's radar once again after uh, having a really good week at uh, St. Jude. Then you got Henley, M, Connors, all these guys are really good. Justin Thomas still fails the test to me. He can't figure it out on the greens, but he's gaining. I mean, he's still hitting those approach shots. So if, if you want to keep riding him, but you can't score DraftKings points if you can't make putts. So him being 13th in draft DraftKings points is, is insane. 13 and in birdie or better gain is insane to me in the last 12 rounds. Cause the guy just doesn't feel like and a lot of it might have to do with that one huge monster round he had on Thursday where he just must've made a whole bunch of birdies. But then I still think we go, you go back to Rye. This middle range is going to be tough to predict. You got guys like Batia, Jason Day. I, I don't, I'm not really enthused about a lot of these people. Davis Thompson. I think I will play Bobby Mack. I love his upside. I love that he can just bomb it out there and he's really good. He's hit, hitting his approaches, birdies. DK points, everything is is uh, really rolling. The guy has won two golf tournaments in the last several months. His confidence is high. Taylor Pendrith is another one with, playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, he he's uh, you could just see all his green numbers to the side. If his drivers, uh, if he's driving it okay, then he's definitely going to be in there. He's a little bit uh, hitting his approaches really well, so he's gaining greens, scores on par fives, everything you'd want. Uh, opportunity wise. Uh, so this is going to be the range, the seven K I need to decide on these, on these seven K's and six K guys. I'm definitely going to be going with these young guns. I think I will go back to Cole cause he could just flat out score when he gets hot with the putter like he did Sunday. Hoagie's interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll look into him more. Look at how low Max Homa's priced. Look at that $6,400 for Max Homa. Wow. That has really been struggle bus. So you got guys like JT Poston down here. Any of these guys, Kirk popped off a little bit. I had him last week, but uh, Jaeger, you, you never know which one of these guys is going to take to this golf course, adjust to the elevation and, and come in and play well. So this is the nitty gritty. The top 30 go to uh, East Lake to finish things off. So I do like Cole, Gracerman, Hoagie, Siwoo. Uh, down in the 6K range, Penrith, Dunlop, Bobby Mack. I think Alex Norin uh, might be a good one also. So I'm going to be looking for that. So let's build out something and then get out of here. So we already know we're going Scotty Scheffler. So let's go down here and find our low-priced guy that we're going to go with. And we'll we'll say Gracerman's our guy. Now we're up to 7850. So we're in good shape here, actually. So we don't have to spend as much time. We'll take Pendrith at 73. Now we're right up there. And uh, and then, then we can start looking into getting another guy up top. If you want to take uh let's see here. Now working back up to the top, uh guys like uh Burns looked really good. Let's see. I wonder what he finished. Yeah, he shot 67 on Sunday. So he just, he was really, really good. I mean, he just had the one around in the 70, uh, shot 70. So just eagles and birdies. The guy can score like a banshee. I don't know what this type of tournament would, uh, he would excel like in this tournament. But uh, the desert courses like Phoenix, he does really well on the West Coast swing. So, you know, we'll give him a shot. And then you still got to get down here and find another couple of cheap guys 
but I don't think that's too much of a problem. Willie Z looked like he was uh, getting things uh, going pretty well. There's plenty of good guys down here. Dunlap was a guy that I was going to look to, so you can put him in there. And now you got 7,800 to finish off your lineup with. And, uh, oh, I think Bobby Mack would uh, would get her done there if, if you so chose to. But we're going to clear that out, come back and, and uh, forget about it and rework it later so we don't give away all the trade secrets. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap things up, put a bow on it, and get out of here. So it is going to be a difficult course to gauge exactly how to play it. I'm going to err on a, the mid, like 15 to 18 under type of golf course. I think maybe it'll take a, a guys a round or two to get acclimated to how the uh, elevation is played and putting greens and, you know, just kind of the whole general walk in the golf course. They'll get out there and play nine uh, maybe the front nine and then the back nine one one or two days this week. We'll have to see. But I uh, appreciate everybody joining me today. Thanks for watching the golf content. More to come. Till next time, see you soon.